This is White Plains Week, the weekly roundup of White Plains, Westchester, and world news with John Bailey, editor and publisher of the daily internet newspaper, White Plains Citizen Net Reporter, WPCNR.com. Jim Benneroff, editor and publisher of SuburbanStreet.com and WhitePlains.com. And me, Peter Katz, formerly with NBC, ABC News, and stations from Boston to Los Angeles. White Plains Week, what's happening? Who are the newsmakers? What's in store for the future? The views and opinions expressed on this program are solely those of the participants. White Plains Week is presented on Optimum Cable Channel 76, Verizon Fios Channel 45, and on the internet at whiteplainsweek.com, youtube.com, and wpcommunitymedia.org. Now, White Plains Week. Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. White Plains, Westchester, and the world. John Bailey with you, White Plains Week, the City News Roundup show with the anchor for the anchor of journalism in White Plains, the old journalism and the new combined. Jim Benneroff. And tonight we are looking at headlines, packed week, and uh, Jim, lay it on us, the headlines of the week. And here are the headlines for the week of May 18th, 2018. County Executive George Latimer sets three public meetings to involve community to analyze who should make decisions on the airport policy on airport decision in mid-October. Airport deal not dead yet. White Plains school budget passes by 82 percent. Ten million dollars in cash reserves approved for school security building maintenance. Good news free busing to the high schools. Severe thunderstorms sweep central and northern Westchester again creating state of emergency in Rockland, Putnam, Dutchess, and Sullivan counties. After 10 months, city sales tax receipts continue an ominous soft four-year trend, down 11% in four years, despite good March and April figures. County is up 6% over the first four months of 2018. Mother's Day soggy. Laux games soaked, eastbound traffic on Tappan Zee Bridge previews Nightmare Memorial Day slow getaway. Courts have not yet rushed court date for fired service employees international union suit over Displaced Persons Act. No decision yet on FASNI suit, which means it will come down late Friday, maybe. Good council development trims its scale from 10 stories to 8, 400 units to 370, assisted living building from 90 units to 82, academic housing from 70 to 50, hearing June 4th. Nader Sayeg, longtime an educator, member of Yonkers School Board, is Yonkers Democratic Convention nominee for former Assemblywoman Shelley Mayer's 90th Assembly District. Rick Swirak retiring after 35 years as Executive Director of WARC, the largest service provider to the disabled in Westchester. White Plains Performing Arts Center announces 15th anniversary season. Tom Wolfe, pioneer of the new journalism dies. Thank you, Jim. And now we'll go to the White Plains Week Rolo Newsreel March of Time. And you are looking at the airport, which has been in the news for about the last year. And this week, uh, George Latimer, the county executive, held a news conference and told us exactly what he's going to do. He's going to involve the community, and this is what he had to say to the news conference. It is my intent by mid-October 
to have dialogue with the leadership of the Board of Legislators to determine if a change in governance is warranted based on the public hearings that we've had, public meetings we've had, and on what types of proposals are on the table and any might, that might be modified. I intend to submit a budget to the Board of Legislators in November that deals with this issue on the basis of whether or not the Board will entertain that policy or not. So if it is the will of the Board, either by majority, uh, uh, informally or formally, uh, to move in a governance or not in a new change of governance plan, we will not submit to the Board of Legislators a plan that they have not seen and drop it on them in the budget process of, of, of November and then expect the community, the advocacy community, the citizens of this county to react in 30 days. That is not good public policy. We will not do it. We're changing directions from what we did before. We think the proper way to do it is the way we've laid it out. The third area is operations, and operations is a broad-based category that covers all of the different issues that relate to people who either use the airport as individual uh, passengers for commercial airlines or for those who are pilots and use the airport for general aviation or corporate uh, customers who are based in the county and have uh, flight uh, equipment out there. And then for the people who live in Westchester County, those who live within the flight path of the airport, which is a fairly large radius, not just the immediate two or three communities around it, all of those folks who in some way, shape, or form interact with the airport have operational issues that must be vented and must be addressed. We can talk about a master plan direction, we can talk about governance. We still have to talk about noise and noise abatements, flight paths. Uh, things that relate to the type of equipment that is being flown out of there, the altitude on the flight paths. We have to discuss the issues of FBOs, fixed base operators, and what their impact is on the airport, and, and how they go about making decisions for them to provide their services or not. All of those issues, under operational issues, have historically been dealt with by the Airport Advisory Board and the Board of Legislators and the Administration. So I want to make sure that we have a public discussion about those operational issues. I want to make sure that we hear directly from the public exactly what those problems are. My hope is, is that people out there have already been cate uh, you know, categorizing the experiences they've had so when we ask them for records, they'll have records available so that we can try to track and deal with these. Some of the operational issues are within the uh, control of county government, some of them are not. And the ones that are not, we will have to deal with FAA and try to lobby them for changes that we think would be advantageous. This, by the way, is one more reason why we want to satisfy the FAA deadline. If we don't satisfy the FAA deadline on the master plan, they claw back money from us, they may very well be unresponsive to any other requests that we make. Okay, so what he's referring to on the master plan is that the county executive and his administration have worked out a deal with the Federal Aviation Administration to have until July 15th to submit a supplemental master plan to the ones that the uh, Astorino uh, administration had has ready to present and they're going to present the Astorino plan without prejudice on June the 1st when it is due. And uh, I also asked uh, the county executive what the status was of the proposal that was made to run the airport. And here's what he said. The Board of Legislators in, uh, had a deal in front of them which they could have accepted for the Macquarie proposal. They did not at the end of the year. They chose not to accept that as part of the budget and they went into uh, reserve funds and they reserved the process of decision making to the new year. The way I look at it is, is that Macquarie Development has put a deal on the table and we will reach out to Macquarie and we will, we will say to them, we are now having a discussion about whether we're going to revisit whether we're going to do this governance change or not. And by the way, you submitted a proposal to us. Do you have any changes in your proposal? How would you feel? In the same way, there were submissions by other entities. I think uh, those entities, if they choose to change their proposal, if somebody else decides to put another proposal before us, since we didn't adopt what happened last year, we're not bound to deal with just that proposal. However, there is one matter, and that is that money was submitted and then returned to those, into those entities that bid and were not, not successfully advanced. So Macquarie's money is still in the county pot. The other ones that bid will return to them. And we may be duty-bound to return Macquarie's money to them as well. I don't know what the amount of money is, but I think in fairness, if we're, if we're looking at this uh, going forward, 
that uh, we, we owe that to Macquarie because they invested a certain amount of money and they, they put money down as, in essence as earnest money as you would in a house. And if you're not going to get the house immediately and we're still going to go through the process, we should return that. However, we are not eliminating anybody from consideration. But the first question is, do we do this at all? That's the first question. And then if we decide we're going to do that, if there's a consensus, if, you know, uh, Chairman Boykin says, uh, you know, uh, Mr. County Executive, we have a consensus in the Board of Legislators that we want to do a deal like this, and we're prepared to do a deal under certain parameters. You know, that's, uh, th that becomes a process that we then look at. But my, going back to Ty's question, my initial reaction was, you can't do the deal until you've discussed the policy that underlies the deal, and we've never discussed the policy underlying the deal. It's been, here's a deal, this is what you get for it, and if you don't do this deal, you now have a hole in your budget. That's not exactly the same as discussing the concept of whether we should do a deal or not. Yeah, follow up, if I may. Do you believe that the county airport needs to expand to serve Westchester? No. You do uh, not. not expand the airport. The airport was meant to be a regional airport. The demand for that airport, were, were we of an expansive mindset, that airport could expand dramatically. The, the market for that airport to its east and to Connecticut is conceivably unlimited. And if we were of a mind to expand the airport, uh, it could become uh, a tremendously larger size. I don't think that's in keeping with our commitment to Westchester. Well, here you have it, James. Um, he says he is definitely against the expansion of the airport, but yet deals could still be considered. And he's, we will all have, as stakeholders, a chance to put our stakes in at three meetings. And these are the dates of the meetings. The master plan will be discussed June the 6th, 7 p.m., Rybrook Village Hall in Rybrook. Governance, June 11th at 7 at the Hergenhan Recreation Center, Armonk, New York. And operations, June 25th, 7 p.m., West Harrison Senior Center in, of course, West Harrison. So, what's your take? Well, um, I don't know that the, I, I think as far as the operations of the airport are concerned, I think <laughs> that the people that need to give opinions on that have to have some degree of expertise. I don't right. think that that's something that the public, uh, the public at large can the public so, has mostly no idea of the dynamics of aviation. Yeah. I mean, uh, I've flown out of the airport frequently, and I've done a lot of flying yes. altogether. Um, but I think operations of airports are a very complex issue. I, I know. You can't just listen to people's opinions on something they yeah. really don't know too much about yeah. or the parameters. And, um, but the whole thing is a matter of, of interest because, hey, if you, we are just going to limit the airport servicing the, um, the private jets and the occasional commercial flights they have, there is a possibility that this is really hurting the people of Westchester. You know, we're just not getting you know, more flights out of there. If you have more private jet flights than commercial flights, if I don't know if you do or not, then you're really hurting the general public because nobody really wants to go to LaGuardia to take a flight. Nobody wants to go to Newark to take a flight. Nobody loves going to Stewart to take a flight. And you particularly don't want to go to Kennedy to take a flight. Wouldn't it be great if you get yet more commercial surface out of Westchester well, County? I, I think that it's, it would be tough to make it a really commercial airport mm -hmm. a la LaGuardia. Of course, uh, I'm not and, saying that. And I'm I saying, don't know how yeah. LaGuardia, when, it, when they're finished renovating it, might be very nice. It might be. But uh, right now it's tough. I personally like flying out of JFK. Mm -hmm. I think the airport is um, well arranged. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's, it's a trip to the airport, yeah. but... Uh, the trip to the it, airport is another... It's nicer than another, LaGuardia. Yeah, it's, a trip to Kennedy is not nice if you're driving it. Let me put it that way. Uh, now, more news on the education front. School budgets were this week in Westchester County, and happy to tell you that the school budget passed in White Plains by 82%. 
I mean, we don't have the problem New Rochelle does, which voted down their school budget and have a tremendous problem. They have cut millions off that budget to get it passed, and they have a problem. Then Joseph Fricka, the new superintendent of schools, his first year says, it takes an engaged and committed community to create and promote a high quality proposed district budget. We are very thankful to all that took the time to attend meetings, distribute information, and participate in focus group meetings and organize community gatherings. It is because of you and the support of our community that we are able to move forward with support of our outstanding student programming. We are thrilled and we are grateful. And if you'll note, the proposal for spending $10 million, that passed with a resounding margin. And the proposal for um, free school busing at no extra cost to the school district, that has passed too. So that has been an issue that they have wanted. And But next year is another story because the teacher's contract has to be negotiated. But this was an intriguing budget and probably since he did not raise it as much as he could have that's good how many, how many do you know how many people voted in the election uh, yeah. less than a thousand less than a thousand yes it's just amazing and it was like only two percent voted two yeah. percent but there was no controversy i'm john bailey <clears throat> and i approve of this budget <laughs> okay right now Big weather news again. You're looking at a fallen tree, not a fallen tree, but a yard that had a tree fall in it right near you, and it crushed two cars. This is a devastating shot. My heart goes out to the, the people that are the, were the victims of this tree falling, and what happened was one of those weird storms came out of um, to Westchester with vengeance. We knew it was coming, but it moved in really quickly. And I was umpiring a game down in East Chester, and uh, I was watching the skies, and I saw this bolt of lightning out of this big black cloud, and it was a frightening situation. No thunder. That's one thing. You see lightning, that means it's really close, because <laughs> you'll usually hear it first. and. Uh, that the oil, also, the storm knocked out a lot of power up in the Sullivan, um, uh, Putnam, Rockland, and Dutchess counties. And um, the governor declared a state of emergency. And um, it, uh, it is now sort of OK now. He, the Westchester got back on after about uh, 300 outages, I believe. and. Um, there has not been the resounding criticism of Con Ed, although NYSEG may be under fire. I don't know. NYSEG, yeah. I think, is responsible for those huge outages up in the Well, I, I, I don't know how much power was knocked out in my area, but that house where that tree fell and crushed the cars, mm -hmm. I know there were wires involved there because I saw them. <coughs> yeah. Um, what power was lost there, I don't know. We didn't lose power, though. Right. The, that is an important thing, since you were without, without 10 days the last time. That's right. Like that. Yes, it was. It was n it's not a good thing. Now, what also is not a good thing is a disturbance in the sales tax. Uh, as you can see, the White Plains sales tax from this side, slide is if they make their um, number that they made last year in the next two months, they will only be 4% down. This is not a good thing because it is more than they were off last year. And, but what is more disturbing is I took a look at how much sales tax we made four years ago, which is approximately $52.9 million. And it is down 11% if we hit our 47 million or so that uh, we, we reject at this time. But I, hopefully we will, we will make it. But this is a long-term trend now, this, this bleeding sales tax receipts. Jim, any comment on that? Well, I think that we've in the past been very dependent on sales tax, but uh, obviously 
we're not going to be able to be that, and I don't know whether that will result in increased property taxes. Uh, but it, it, that's, I think, one possibility. It has to be replaced. And, and we'll have to see what happens when all the housing that has been proposed or is under construction is completed and how quickly it rents up. Well, I, yeah. Possibly that will help the sales tax. It may be. Perhaps we can have gambling parlors. <laughs> <laughs> That's referred to, in reference to the Supreme Court, Court decision. decision. Uh, now, whether the county sales tax is doing really well, it is up 6% for the first three months of this year, as that slide shows. And who knows, if you put that 6% together, and if we continue that trend the whole year, you'll get about um, 18 million in uh, new sales tax revenue from the county. Plus, put that together with the 15 million surplus they got at the end of last year, which nobody seems to want to talk about except me, and you've got, you've knocked off the deficit that everybody is worrying their worry beads over. You know, and uh, this, I don't understand it. We have to quantify what that 28 million is. Nobody has actually done that. Maybe there, but it can't be a phantom deficit. I mean, just look at the, the state sales tax figures that I look at. I don't know what they're doing at the county. Mother's Day deluge. It was a very rainy Mother's Day. And as you can see, the barbecue for mom and the moms in my family had to be done in the driveway with the uh, car serving as a uh, catch-all for various implements of the barbecue. But we were able to get it done. But the major thing that got me was that our guests uh, came across the Tappan Zee Bridge. And my goodness, one guest took an extra hour to get to our place, being an hour late. The uh, Another guest was three and a half hours late because of an enormous traffic jam backing all the way back across um, the throughway north. And this was because an accident was not cleared on the eastbound side. They have to clear those accidents a lot faster. Now, when the bridge is finally all open, supposedly there'll be breakdown lines, but there'll also be bus lanes and there'll be bicycle lanes. And I'm wondering if we're putting our priorities slightly out of shape. They have, they cannot, since they're only adding, adding one lane in each direction for traffic jam, they cannot not get those breakaways, those breakdowns whisked out of there quickly. I mean, I mean, you'd, I, when we came across the bridge westbound on Saturday for a similar family gathering, it, we were struck by the amount of eastbound backup. And there was no accident on the bridge that I could see. It went all the way back to Spring Valley again. Is this, I do not want to even think about what that means for the Memorial Day weekend. So you're, you're, you're warned, but the bridge is not alleviating the traffic problem. Yeah. It just isn't. It's there. It's something we have to live with. They've got to do something about that. The SEIU is no longer in the news, and unfortunately, they report to me that the self, um, the Service Employees International Union employees who were fired by that outfit on Main Street have not gotten a court date yet in from our courts that were supposed to expedite their lawsuit. Someone should look up the word expedite, see what it means. It means quickly. Meanwhile, these people are in bad shape. Um, now, we had a nomination by the Democrats of Nader Sayeg, shown here, uh, for the Assembly District 90, shown here. He is going to be running to replace um, Shelley Mayer in the uh, Assembly District 90, which runs from just below Hastings on Hudson, deep down in the North Yonkers, and east, I think, apparently across to Greenberg. Those maps are very sketchy, so you don't like, <laughs> no, really, the maps on the state website are ridiculous, because you can't really see the boundaries, and that's what this map is from that I show here. Now, 
Rick Suarez is retiring after uh, 35 years as head of ARC of Westchester and before that WARC, Jim, and you knew him, and as I did, I interviewed him on People Be Heard um, this week, and he had a great interview and gives you a great look You can at what's ahead. And uh, Mr. Suarez's program can be seen at 7 p.m. Saturday on Fios, uh, 45 and cable vision 76 Altai's cable vision and also on the internet and the white pines performing arts center uh, launched its uh, announced its new season and there are the plays sitting that they're going to be doing um, and uh, they for more information on that you can go to wppac.com or give them a call now Tom Wolf died. Do you have some comments on Tom Wolf's uh, well, I, impact on journalism? Uh, I will probably eventually read his books. I may have uh, Bonfire of the Vanities in my mm -hmm. collection. They made a movie out of that. Yeah. And, um, you know, I personally don't know as much about him as I probably should, mm -hmm. but. Um, how did you like his style of writing? Well, I didn't read. Uh, what are some of the other books he wrote? Uh, Bonfire of the Vanities is the ones that. Um, yeah, and he, well, he has a collections which I brought with me, but not with a in reach of my set. But he's mainly known for his incredible reporting for the Herald Tribune. And he created the style of the new journalism, which you go someplace, you absorb a lot of people and a lot of reports do a lot of talking, and you weave it into a combination of atmosphere and what they told you, and it wasn't exactly verbatim of what happened, but what it was a shaping of what yeah. happened. It was known as the new, uh, that's the way I would describe new journalism, but it revolutionized reporting for about 20 years, and it was characterized by, uh, books uh, the, by um, magazines like New York and um, in fact New York did one very famous uh, journalism piece called Hot Pants and Sugar Man which is based on composites of, of uh, pimps and prostitutes that they interviewed. It was really criticized for that that people thought these were real people but they were makeups yeah. based on interviews and um, that is what new journalism was about. But he got a tremendous write up and he was a pioneer and he could make a typewriter sing. You know, he really could. And uh, now I want to say that uh, we don't have really a time for the uh, Trump report this week, but needless to say, the usual thing has, things happened. We, of course, welcome a new sponsor, News Care. And if you send your $600,000 membership check to News Care, which supports aggressive reporting, you will receive a Cool Reporters Club badge, a fedora hat, and an original journalistic camera. John Bailey, Jim Benneroff, and for Peter Katz, good night for good White night. Plains Week. This has been White Plains Week news and commentary about White Plains, Westchester, and the world. The views and opinions expressed on this program were solely those of the participants. White Plains Week, produced by White Plains Citizen Net Reporter and presented on Optimum Cable Channel 76 and Verizon Fios Channel 45. You may view White Plains Week anytime on the internet at whiteplainsweek.com, youtube.com, and wpcommunitymedia.org. For White Plains Week, this is Peter Katz speaking.